Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, I wanted to go through uh, the, the teardown process and repair process on one of these original Oculus controllers. Um, they're definitely a little tougher to work on than the Quest 2 controllers. Uh, there's just some additional complexities here, and the ring is one solid piece instead of uh, splitting apart in the middle, so that presents some issues. So let's go through it together. In order to get started, what we have to do is we need to take off this decal that covers up the screws in the battery compartment. Once I can kind of get it up, then I can just hopefully pull the whole decal away in one big piece, which reveals those screws. I'm gonna use my T5 screwdriver here to remove all of the screws. So I say all of the screws, but there's only two actually. Step two is a little trickier. This grip portion, this rubber part here, actually kind of pops off once I've got those screws undone. So I'm gonna take my pry tool and wedge it in at the top and it should just pull away just like that. Now everything is exposed and we can kind of see that there's a couple screws that hold the ring in and a couple screws that hold this battery compartment in. And we'll go ahead and take those out too. I'll start with the screws that take the ring. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five screws that hold this battery compartment in. This next step is kind of a pain and this is, this is why a lot of people don't repair these and a lot of people who do repair them don't like repairing them self-included in order to get this ring off because it's all one big piece and there's no break in the middle like with the quest 2 rings this portion of the interior of the ring actually has to separate so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my pry tool and i'm going to kind of get it in here and then we're going to leverage this out now sometimes there's because there's adhesive in the ring that keeps this in place i'm gonna i may have to take a heat gun and actually loosen that adhesive and then i can pull the ring out so i'm gonna go ahead and warm this up just so that you know i can ensure that there's no damage to the sensors as i'm doing this it helps often that adhesive and then i'm going to take my pry tool and and go to town pulling this apart <laughs> We should heat it up to where it's pretty warm to the touch, but obviously you don't want to melt it. You know, that would that would damage the controller. Then after we're complete there, you can take my pry tool, pop it in under the ring, and try to pull this ring away from the inside. See that separation there? That's what we're going for. This ring can now collapse in on itself in order for us to move it away from this trigger guard. And I'll do the same thing on the other side just to make sure it's not hung up. Now I should be able to kind of collapse this ring in on itself. It's pretty flexible, but you got to be gentle with it. If anybody's wondering, it is a little bit more challenging to do this with, with the camera in front of me. Alrighty, and now that component is off and we can remove this faceplate. Unlike the Quest 2, the faceplate's almost the last thing to come off. It's, it's one of the last steps in the process and we can finally access the two screws that hold it in now that we've taken the ring off. Once those two screws come out, this faceplate can just lift up, revealing our board, our joystick, and everything in between. I've got a total of four screws that I have to remove. One, two, right here and then three, four that hold the joystick in. So we'll go ahead and take those out and then we should be able to replace the joystick from there. Be careful with this battery connection. I usually like to get my tweezers up underneath, grab both three wires, and then I pull up from the back very gently. This antenna wire's gotta come out too. That one's a little easier. We need to be careful when we're taking this board out because there's one more ribbon that's connected under here, this tracking sensor ribbon. It's connected under the board, so we need to lift it away carefully as not to damage that. Since I've gone ahead and detached the battery connector, I'm going to go ahead and take that off to make my life a little easier. This is your tracking sensor. All right, now the joystick and the board are free, and we can detach the joystick from the board. This is a sliding latch. It should come out just like that. Good news about these joysticks is they use the same joystick module as all of the other Oculus controllers and the Meta controllers. So if you have a joystick for the Rift S controller or the Quest 1 controller like this one, then you can just replace it with any old joystick module that you find on our website. These springs are unique to the 
Quest 1 Rift S controllers, though, so that's got to carry over. We can't use the capacitance springs from the other controllers or the joystick toppers from the other ones. Once that's on, I can go ahead and plug that back in place. We'll secure that latch, and then this can go back in here. Another thing I am going to do just to make my life a little easier is I'm going to take the trigger out. Doing this just makes it easier to place the board because that spring is kind of in the way. It's easier to put this ribbon cable back in once the board's kind of in place. Otherwise, there's just not a whole lot of slack to work with. So the board's not screwed in, but I, I have it where I want it. Now that the board's secured and this spring back is back in place, now that the board is secured and this spring is back in place, I can go ahead and put the trigger back in place as well. That seems like it's working. Put the battery compartment back in place and then we can put this cable back in. At this stage, I want to test the controller and make sure that that joystick is good and everything's working fine. So during the testing, um, it was impossible to get the uh, controller to track with the device so we, we could pair it, but it, it wouldn't show up. And usually that's an indication that there's some sort of damage to this main board here. Um, and sure enough, I took the board back out of the device and it revealed that there is just a little bit of liquid in, inside here. and my camera will focus, you can see that there is just a bit of corrosion there at C19. So we're going to have to replace this board too. Not a big deal, just uh, just have to do it. Got a new board here and, and this one should work much better. At this point I can just start putting back the screws. First we're going to secure this faceplate down. Getting the ring on is a, is a tricky process, but we're just going to have to kind of go back in reverse order of how we did it originally, which is folding this ring in on itself so that everything can fit inside here. I wish there was an easier way to do it, but unfortunately this is just the best way that I've found. And then it's just kind of a process of making sure that this is nice and tight and there's no loose space. And once all the space is taken out, then this ring should just kind of pop in. By kind of pushing and pulling at the same time, I can create enough slack where that will just fit in there. And now it's back in. Of course, we need to put the handle back on. Just like that. And then I got my two screws in the battery compartment. And that's pretty much it. That's that's the full tear down and rebuild of the Quest 1 slash Rift S controller. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Uh, Please do give us that like and subscribe if you enjoyed our content um, and you want us to keep making more of it. Uh, right now we are doing our giveaway, um, so if you want to be entered for a chance to win our fireworks headset, you can just subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like and comment on the two videos that we made about it. We'll see you guys on the next one.